For those of you who want to work with myopia, nearsight, uh, we begin to work with the eye charts here. So <clears throat> the way to work with the, these eye charts is to take any position that you want. Doesn't matter. You can be one lady in London. She started here, you know, and at, at, on Sunday afternoon she was standing here and she had flashes of the 2020 line, which is the second line from the bottom. So the objective of this exercise is simply to move down the, the chart. Okay, some of you have already been doing this. <laughs> okay, so the way to do this is that you look at the letters. So look at one letter blink and look at the next letter. Okay? So what happens, there's something interesting that happens is that suppose you can see the L, LVD. Okay, then you just do pounding for a, a few seconds like that. So <clears throat> then you can see the letter immediately below. Okay? So when you just relax for, for a, a minute or so, then you can see the line immediately below. Look at the first letter, then the last letter on the line, the second, etc. So just move back and forth and look at just one letter and blink. Right. So you will find that there are flashes. So when you're looking at just one letter, you will find that this letter sort of stands out and becomes clearer. That's what we're after right now. So when you can see that, when you can recognize the letter, that's okay. It doesn't have to be razor sharp. Okay. You're just waiting until you can recognize yeah, then you can go down another line. Okay. You'll also find that as you're uh, looking at it, maybe for some of you looking down your nose like that, it becomes clearer, sometimes out of the sight. Play around with that. Okay. Or sometimes like this, you know, looking over your glasses. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so the objective for you here is to find any chart anywhere in the room and begin to move away from that. In each of your manual, there is a chart which I recommend that you, you put up on a bathroom or kitchen or some have it on the refrigerator door <laughs> uh, and then begin to move away from that. So in Hong Kong, they have maids, so you have to instruct the maids not to remove those little markers you will put on the floor. <laughs> but here, I don't think you have maids, do you? <laughs> well, there are very few of you who, who have. So again, that's a feedback to, to, to yourself. Suppose if you start your, your hair at, at the one and a half meter line, so then you simply put a little marker on the floor with the date. Then you will find that, like one gentleman from the workshop in, recently in London, uh, he sent me an email. Initially he had misunderstood, or he had, uh, yeah, he misunderstood. So he thought he'd only improved three inches. But in fact, he'd improved 13 inches, which is a big difference. Mm -hmm. right. so, so that gives you a feedback. Then you can begin to wonder about how many more days would it take to you before you get out to the... So you begin to get that progress, okay? So, uh, do you understand what it is I want you to do? Have a go. We're not wanting to go, of course, just to get a 20-20, but uh, so you want to answer start? Just to get a couple of, uh, any distance that you feel comfortable with, okay? So, of course, at the end, when you're beginning to, to, uh, to see the bottom line, then you will have to get out to the three-meter the, the three line, which is the last dot, basically the first row. Right. So, uh, meanwhile, it's just use uh, one eye and the other eye. Right. Yeah. Yes, okay. Would you like to, to uh, be the demonstration person? <laughs> All right, okay. So, so when you came in, wh where were you? Which line were you on? Do you remember? Um, 2100. 2100, okay. So you need to be somewhere around there, I think. Okay, just, just, just here on, okay. on this dot there. Okay, so when you, which chart do you find most comfortable? The black for? one. The black one, okay. Mm -hmm. So right now, what is the, the lowest line that you can see? H-O-N. Um, H-O-N? No, down. This one, oh, wow, this is 2060, yeah, okay. So the next line, you can't see that. I can make out some letters, yes. Okay, so, so if you just do a little uh, pounding, try to make it as black as you possibly can, just for a couple of seconds, about 30 seconds. So when you do that, then you will notice that it's able, you're able to move down one more line. So <clears throat> doing this game, uh, you can move down a couple of lines each time. So what's happening here is that your visual system is beginning to, to sort of fall into the way to, uh, to be in order to get focus. So it's, it's a game that we're playing. Okay, Lynn, so if you just, yeah, so look at the line below. No? Yeah. So this one? Okay. 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 <coughs> All right. Yeah. It's about opening up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you take a deep breath and just let yourself open up. Mm 
That's incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Did you say you do the, just one eye at a time? You could do it with both eyes also. Some of you have one eye that needs more training than the other. Okay, so. So, but right now, the objective for you is to move down as many lines as you can. So, so just experiment with, with uh, and if you have, uh, have gone down a couple of lines, and try to find out where the two eyes, if there are differences, left and right eye. <laughs> Oh, the, the, the chart. Three lines. Uh-huh. The second from the bottom. No, no, that's okay. The second from the bottom is 2020. Yeah, I found that I went from chart to chart, sort of from where I was. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then I'd go back to that one and then I could get a very varying letter. And the last time I did it, I was able to get the whole row. Good. So that's 2020. Yeah. That was, if I didn't blink, yeah. It was yes. 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 Yeah. That's uh, one of the things that are important. Uh, it's very important. I'm sure you begin to realize that now that you need to move your eyes around, because if you're keeping your gaze steady, uh, in this culture, we are, you are trained to look into a person's eyes. You know. So sometimes you meet people who actually sort of have dead eyes. I mean, they don't blink or anything like that. They've trained themselves to do this because they think that this is socially. Uh, advantageous, you know. but in fact, in terms of eyesight, uh, it is not a good thing to do. So one of the things that you need to do is, is swinging. Okay. Uh, that's another Bates idea, which has to do with getting sharpness. Would you be interested in learning how to get sharpness? No. By any chance? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So one of the things uh, that happens is, you see, the, the central point where we have absolute clear vision, needs to move, okay? So there's micro movements in the eyes, even if you're looking straight. If, if I'm looking straight, you know, then my eyes are, are vibrating a little bit. So but we need to, to alter that, because if we are not moving the central foveal point, then it loses its clarity. There were studies done where they fixed on a contact lens a, an image, and in a few seconds, the person couldn't see the image anymore because it didn't move. In other words, the image moved at the same rate as at the eyeball. So movement is essential for vision. And that's one of the key points in, in learning to have natural vision. So your eyes need to move around. So if you look at the eye chart here, take, say, the E. Look at the left and look at the right. Look at the bottom and down. Right. So when you're looking at, at that, you can, you can see just the center bar. And you can also see the, the black. You have a white or a yellow or whatever. So that's the negative of that. So this is the, the, the uh, when you look at, at the line that you have maximum visual acuity on, then uh, the, say that the bar on the E is the absolute uh, minimum clarity that you have. In terms of, of degrees, this is one degree. Your visual acuity is maximum at one degree. That's the smallest you can see. So what happens if you are just moving your head? So I'll just demonstrate. For, so if you're moving your, your head and just let your eyes go like this, just move back without seeing anything, and then you just let your eyes go out and find a line on the chart. Then you should just, just close your eyes and open up. So you need to do the swinging with your eyes open, huh? <laughs> horizontally like this. You want, want your eyes open, yes, then just moving. So you can actually look at the beginning, left and the last. Step. Just let your eyes sort of scan, or you can imagine that you have sort of a, a giant feather, and you're just sort of touching. And then just blink, and then let your eyes find one letter on the line. It's not... No. So that brings sharpness. Now, when you're looking at a person, you can do the same thing. You can look at the left side of the eye or the left side and right side of the pupil. Right, so that the person would not notice. Yeah. Now, when you're swinging, are you you're not moving your hips? You you your can shoulders. You're going back and forth this way. swing swing. Yeah, uh, yeah, horizontally across. You you can do this with your body also. You know, like this big, big swings that get, because when you, when you're doing it with big swings like this, 
then uh, you, you are simply losing the visual thing, so then you relax your eyes. You can also just, just move your, your head, you know, like your top, like this, or you can just move your eyes. So moving your body is a way of, of learning, but it has to be horizontal. For children with uh, strabismus, that's an important exercise. So, so they do it sort of like the elephant was swinging its nose, you know, like this. Because when you do that, uh, then you're relaxing your visual system. That's the key. Uh, introduce another thing. We need to use all those strings here. Uh, we have two eyes, and as you <coughs> remember we talked about yesterday, the image from, uh, half of the image from the left eye go to the right side, and half of the left image go to, or half of the right image go to the left side. So it crosses right down the middle. And this is then combined inside uh, the visual cortex at the back of the brain to become a 3D image. Sometimes those images are not registered. Long like prints in, in the magazine, a color print where one color is out of alignment, so it becomes blurry. <laughs> so the same thing happens in our uh, vision. So there's a very simple exercise which involves these strings here, which um, I can just begin to give them out as I explain. Maybe just, so everybody needs one. There's several several uh, versions of this. Okay. So they're thick and thin, whatever. <clears throat> Deluxe. <laughs> It doesn't really matter what it is. <clears throat> We're all tangled up here. <laughs> so uh, we need at least one paper clip. I don't know how many paper clips I have. So why don't we just start with one paper clip each? <clears throat> one paper clip, yeah. No, 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 just one, just one. Oh, one. I have different fashions here. Does anybody not have one? Because I have one that I can't bring up. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Okay, so let me uh, demonstrate what we have to do. This, we, there are two things we will use the string for. One is for checking the fusion of the left and the right image. And another one, this, the string is very good for training one eye. You know, those of you who need to train one eye, for near and medium distance. So first we'll just uh, talk about the fusion. So Judy, if you would just be my, uh, my, my string person. <laughs> stringer. String, you know what a stringer is? A stringer in, in, in TV parlance, that's a, a freelance person that sometimes shoot videos of disasters, fires, and stuff like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, to, to check out your fusion, you take the string, put it on the tip of your nose, look down the string, so you can use the paper clip and put it somewhere out there. So if you look at the paper clip, there should be a phantom cross. Okay. The, the two string would, will sort of become a cross. So wherever you look at the, at, if you look very close and, and very far, then the cross, the, the center of the cross would be where your, your attention is. If you have tram lines, then we need to work on it. Okay, so let me make a drawing. <clears throat> so you can tie the string to uh, a chair or something like that. Okay. Well, uh, I think you have difficulty pulling. And just tie it to the chair. Actually, what I think you can do, you can just pull it down, press it down here between the seat and the... Mm -hmm. what, I'm not sure what the... Uh, okay. No, this, this... Okay. So when you're looking down the string, the string would appear to have a cross. So if you put the paper clip here, whatever you look at, that's where the center of the cross is. Okay. If you have it this way here, um, like two straight lines, 
that means that you are not able to fuse the two images. And some of you, this might be part of your vision problem. So for some people, you can uh, make the fusion to a certain place. After that, it becomes tram lines. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, where does it become two? Uh, Woo! Here? Yeah, uh -huh. Okay, so that's part of your problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so here, so this is where the paper clip is, and that's where it becomes two? Now it's across. Okay, yeah, all right, so we need to, to move it back. So move your eyes from here, just along the string, in and out. Right now, very lazily. One line? Yeah, crossing. Cross uh -huh. or, or merge here. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to continue to, to move the cross out back and forth. Okay. So any any normal vision you would have a cross. If even if you look there, there would be a, a you know, just a tiny legs oh, and the cross. Okay. Right. That's what I want to do. Is yeah. The cross all the way so down. you need to want to see that all the way. Wherever you look, there should be a cross. Here of you have one eye that needs more training than the other. So the string is very good for that. So the way to do this is uh, you just take, can I borrow the string? Sure. So you just, uh, if you want, so for instance, my right eye, I want to train that. Then I'll close my, my, my left eye, and then I'll just use the, put the string under the eye, let the eye go out. You'll, of course, only see one string, okay? So that trains the focusing of the near and the far and the medium. Right. So if you have one eye that needs to be more training, this is a very good exercise to do. Right. How and do you can, know if you have one eye that needs to be more trained? You check with the chart, for instance. Okay. So if one eye is uh, three lines further down than the other, if you want to be really uh, sort of, <coughs> excuse me, thorough about this, you can find out what, what your close vision is for each eye, put a marker on, and what is the extent of your clear vision, put a marker on, so then you can see your progress. Oh. Or you can tie a knot on it if you want. Right. So then you find out what is what is the extent of my, my visual field. So then you can monitor the, the, the growth of the as you push it out.